Hi everyone, my name is Santiago and I'm a developer relations at Chainsafe and we are the core maintainers of the Web3.js library. Welcome to our Web3.js series. This will be a playlist of short videos that will help you to get started with Web3.js and Ethereum development. These series are made for web developers or new developers who want to get started with Web3 development. This series can also benefit front-end developers since we will learn how to integrate MetaMask to your React app using Web3.js. You just need to know some JavaScript or TypeScript to be able to follow this series. Today, we are diving into an overview of Web3.js. What is it? How it works? And I will guide you through a quick start guide to get started with Web3.js. If you want to connect with other developers or get support, I will drop the link to the Discord in the description. So let's keep things simple and get started. Web3.js is a JavaScript library that allows you to talk to any EVM-compatible blockchain, like Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, or Avalanche. As we can see in the diagram, when a user interacts with a DApp like Uniswap, Web3.js acts as a wrapper, sending the request to the node endpoint, which can be Infura, Alchemy, QuickNode, etc. And lastly, this request is sent to a blockchain node, and the node responds to your request by sending or retrieving data from the blockchain. But don't worry. All of this is happening under the hood and you just need to deal with basic JavaScript code. The answer is simple. It simplifies your development process. Instead of sending complicated JSON RPC requests to talk to the blockchain, you can simply use Web3.js. Also, Web3.js has an amazing and committed team behind. Since June 2020, ChainSafe took over as the lead maintainer of the library with the financial support of the Ethereum Foundation and Nomic Labs, facing the challenge of rewriting the whole library in TypeScript and launch a new version 4. Here, we can see some of the projects that have used Web3.js, such as Remix ID, Metamask, Uniswap, and Chainlink, though there are more than 5,000 dependents relying on Web3.js. Web3.js version 4 was fully written in TypeScript which allows compatibility with both JavaScript and TypeScript, so now it's available as an ECMAScript and CommonJS imports. The size of the library was reduced by half to 160 kilobytes, taking less space in your project and improving overall efficiency and loading time. It's worth mentioning that this is the size of the whole library, but since Web3.js has a modular design, you can also download the specific package you need to use, such as contracts, accounts, utils, etc. Now, I will walk you through the installation of Web3.js, the documentation, and the quick start guide, and you will be able to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. So, let's code. So, the first thing that we have to do is to install Node.js. To do that, we can go to nodejs.org, and then you can choose your operating system to install it. After you install Node, you are all set to start playing around with Web3.js. Now, we can open our code editor, and then we can run the command npm init-y, to create a node project. After that, we can install the Web3.js library by running the command npm install web3. After the Web3.js library is successfully installed, you will see it in your dependencies here. Now we can create a JavaScript file, we can call it in the .js, and we can start playing around with Web3.js. The two main things that we'll always need to start Web3.js is first, to import the Web3 object, and secondly, initialize Web3 with a provider. To import, we can just copy this to import the Web3 object, and then to initialize the provider, we'll need to create a new instance of Web3 with a provider. Now you may be wondering where is a provider. A provider will be a name point that we will use to talk to a blockchain node. In this case, you can use QuickNode, Alchemy, or Infura. I will use Infura, then I can create a new API key. Uh, let's talk to the Ethereum mainnet, save changes, and at the end you will have this endpoint that is the one that you need to initialize the provider of Web3. Now we can paste our Infura key here and make sure you don't push this to GitHub, otherwise other people will be able to interact with your key. Now we are set up to start interacting with the Ethereum blockchain. So let's just start doing this using promises by typing web3.eth.getBlock number. So we can retrieve the last block number in the Ethereum blockchain and then we can print it. Now we can open our terminal and then we can run the command node index.js and we will see that this is the current block number of the Ethereum blockchain. 
We can also do this by using async await. So let's create an asynchronous function. Let's call it here. And then we can print the last block number here. Let's open the terminal. Let's type node index.js. And here we'll see the current block number of the Ethereum blockchain. We can also see all the different available methods for the web it package by typing this. And then you will see all the different methods here. You can visit the documentation in docs.web3js.org and you will be able to follow the quick start guide to get started with other provider methods, creating wallets and interacting with the smart contracts. Anyway, this is something that we will cover in the next videos. And that's everything for today, guys. Don't forget these two things. You must always initialize Web3 with a provider. It can be either a testnet provider, a mainnet provider, or a local one like Ganache. Remember that now you can import Web3 with ECMAScript and CommonJS modules. In the next videos, we will dive into the Web3.js functionalities like the utilities, deploying and interacting with smart contracts, sending transactions, listening to events, and many more. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest Web3 updates and join our Discord to connect with other developers and get support to build with Web3.js. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Mm -hmm.